so I got to the shop early. Um, not a whole lot of other people there, maybe like 20 guys. And I don't think that anybody knew exactly how many people to expect at these RPTQs. Somebody did all the math of, you know, how many shops were the closest to whatever RPTQ there was. And this one was 66, had the closest shops. So I figured you're never going to get over 66. It's not like every single guy that qualifies is going to be able to go to this thing. And then other people are going to come up to Toronto. You know, maybe other destinations. There was one in the southwest that I think a bunch of people probably flew to. Uh, and so I'm looking around. There's like 20 guys. And so I'm thinking, okay, if this can be 32 or less, I can get this done, you know, in like a clean five rounds. I'm going to sail right through. Um, but there's still about an hour. And so I was looking around. Everybody seemed to know each other. I think there's just a lot of shops in Toronto. And so there are a lot of like local teams that were there, guys that have qualified. But I didn't know anybody. So I just went to one of their back rooms. And I filled out my, you know, deck sheet. And I did it very secretively with all my stuff around it to make sure nobody saw my tech. And uh, I finished that pretty early, and I shuffled my deck, make sure it was really thorough, you know, look through everything, make sure that it was a good randomization, my shuffling technique was good, and it was. So I'm just in there shuffling and looking at the time. You know, I don't actually have a watch. This is just the signal for looking at the time. Uh, pulling out the cell phone, looking at the time. And, you know, pretty soon I was just getting antsy, you know, because, you know, half an hour, big tournament. And so I just start walking back in the store like a crazy man. So people see this weird American guy just, like, pacing the floors, looking around to see if he can see anybody's decks that are out playing. And uh, I see what, about what I expected to see. I saw some Abzan. I saw a lot of uh, the blue-black control and the uh, blue-black-white dragons deck. And so I thought, okay, well, this is good. You know, I'm programmed to smash blue-black and the blue-black-white dragons deck. As long as I can steer clear of Abzan most of the day, it should be all right. So the shop continues to fill up. And then, like, at the very last second, a whole bunch of guys pour in. So we, you know, shattered the 32. We ended up on 48 people exactly. So... Finally, the part you've been waiting for, the actual tournament report. Uh, we get to the first round, and I've got all of my in-the-zone score pads here with all the information on it. So first, I played a man named Bob, who was a really cool guy, and I ended up trying to hang out with him a little bit after. Um, I think he might not have done really well, because I didn't see him after the second or third round. So Bob, if you're watching this, I'm sorry you didn't do that well, but you were a lot of fun to play with. Um, and Bob was on Blue Black Control which I was so happy to see because my deck just, you know, is almost impossible for me to lose to blue-black control unless I do something like draw 10 mountains in a row. And so I played him and, you know, got the, the life title just kind of whittling away here, you can see. You know, no ink on my side, a whole bunch of little stuff over here. And the deck did what it's supposed to do. Uh, it played some quick early threats, it got, you know, resilient things out, and it just, it went straight through. Uh, game two, I saw he played a land that could produce red. And so I was thinking, like, oh, no. You know, I, I, I sat down and I did all the work that I could do. I looked at the top 12 decks over the last several weeks, you know, everything that had won the Pro Tour, everything that had won a big tournament since the Pro Tour, everything that was at least, like, 2 or 3% of the metagame. And I've got my whole chart here. Nope, I don't have it right there. But anyway, I've got, you know, the whole thing of all the, the sideboarding stuff. And I see red, and I'm thinking, like, I have no idea why he has red in this deck. And so I'm just waiting to see what it is. Uh, and it ends up being uh, Karanos, I think is the name of it. The um, the black-red, blue-black, blue-red, there we go. The blue-red god, that if you reveal a land card off the top, you draw it. And if you reveal a non-land, you get a free lightning bolt. Um, but it was so late in the game that it didn't matter. I was able to just push through. So I got that one two zip and, you know, I'm sitting pretty good. I uh, just won a game 2-0. I didn't lose a single life point dur during it because those matches, you know, I either just smash face all the way through or they turn the corner and then kill me pretty quickly. But I was through the first round, hadn't lost a single life point. Um, I played somebody really nice. Uh, he played Thought Seizes, Anticipates, Foul Tongue Invocations, Icefall Regents, and Scorns. So that was that deck. So round one was done. Uh, I was 1-0. I had five rounds to go. So, it was over fast enough. I went to the washroom, because you do not call them bathrooms in Canada. I walked into the place after a long trip, and I said, excuse me, can you show me your bathroom? And the guy looked at me like, it's a bathroom. Oh, the washroom, yes. And so I went there, and they actually had a sign up that called it the bathroom, and then people had graffitied it out and said, no, this is Canada, we call it a washroom. You're a peasant, you're a peasant. She turned me into a newt. So anyway, um, got some nice time to chill. And then I went to round two up against Adam. And Adam was playing a rogue deck, which again, when I started to see the stuff he was playing, I just thought, I didn't plan against this. You know, I do all this very careful planning and then I'm running up against rogue. 
Um, but the sorts of things that he played were uh, caryatids, thought seizes, roasts, downfalls, tassigers, blights. So the black, red, green deck I did not see coming. Uh, so the first game, um, his life total here is just a long total of pings. 19, 18, 16, 15, 13, 12, 11, 12, 16, 11, 5, 3, 4, and then dead. Uh, the second game, uh, he got me in just a couple of swings. There's still plenty of ink on his side, but he ended up getting me. Uh, and then the third game, uh, he got me for a single point of damage, and I just smashed through the rest. Uh, the second game, I think my sideboarding was a little shaky, just because I hadn't seen a lot of his deck. Um, but the third game pulled out pretty well. It's a, it's a resilient deck. It's aggro, and so it's got a game plan. And so it doesn't bring in a whole lot of reactive cards. But uh, I was able to get through that, and so I was 2-0. and and so I was thinking at this point, you know, there's four rounds left. If I can just win the next two rounds, I can probably double ID into the finals, right? And so then I go on to round three, and I kid you not, I played Kai B. Not Kai Bude, but when I saw his name up on that sheet, I'm like, oh no, I have to play Kai, I'm dead. And so I go over there and I'm talking to him, and uh, it turns out his name is actually right underneath Kai Bude's and the, the registration thing. You know, you can go on the internet and see who's qualified for the regionals. So I played Kai. Uh, I, uh, not Kai Bude, but I did play Kai. And when I was playing up against him, the cards that I wrote down uh, were Raptor, Thoughtseize, Murderous Cut, um, the Mystic that uh, morphs the Elemental, Courser, and it looks like P-O-W-N, and I'm not sure what that was supposed to be. Um, but he was playing a Den Protector Raptor deck, which was very good. And it was extremely well positioned for this uh, metagame because there were so many morphs that he had. Uh, the, uh, the Den Protector's a morph, the uh, Mystic you can flip up to make you know, three different colors of mana. And the whole time I'm looking at it thinking, like, why does he need all those particular colors? But it's really just to have something to flip up because it brings back all of the Raptors. And so, you know, game one... I've got here, uh, his life pedal is, you know, this, this long string over here. There's always a whole lot of ink on my opponent's side, very few on mine. Uh, he did get me, get me down to 10 because he had a, a pretty big swing, uh, but I got him uh, there. And then the second game, you can see, again, very long column on his side, and there's only one little thing here, uh, but he actually killed me in that one. And he killed me because, you know, usually I swing through, and I start off with um, Founder's Street Denizen. And then next turn, you know, I play two creatures, or I play a, a Dragon Fodder, which brings two creatures, and it's a 3-1. And if they have to block with one of their better creatures, you know, usually that hits the yard. I've still got a whole bunch of stuff. But he was able to block with these Raptors, and then later in the game, flip something back over and just have a whole bunch of Raptors. And so he drew really well with all of his Raptors and Den Protectors. And as much as I would swing, they just kept coming back and back and back. And so I lost game two there. And then game three, that was very similar, except I only got him down to like 14 at the lowest. He just had complete control of that game. He didn't need to remove my stuff. He just needed to have all of his. Uh, and I had probably my biggest, well, I think really my only misplay of the whole tournament was swinging in when we, he had a morph down and two man up. And I don't even know if you can call it a misplay, just because uh, I think the only way that I really won that is that if that was a morph creature, which he had in his deck, that cost more than two. Um, and if it did, I would have been able to swing through for enough damage to be able to get him close enough to lethal. Uh, but it turned out it was just one of the things that you can flip over for two. And so he flipped it and had three of the raptors. And so two of them come face up, one of them's face down just for insurance, and just blows out my team, and he's got all this big stuff to swing through. Uh, so I end up losing to Kai B, uh, which I didn't feel that bad about, because he ended up going straight through, I think he just went undefeated, to become the very uh, first uh, spot in the top eight. So, uh, round three lost to Kai B. And so I'm two and one, and I'm a little bummed about it. You know, here's this you know deck that I had never prepared for. Uh, hadn't really popped up anywhere. But I thought, okay, I've got three rounds left. If I can keep going with that same pattern of winning two and then a third game, then I'm still good because I can win two more rounds. I can intentionally draw. I'll probably be on the draw in the top eight, but I'm, you know, I've still got something to go for. Uh, so that is when, let's see, that's round five. Okay. So here's round four, and I played up against Lucas, and Lucas is playing the deck that I, you know, just can't seem to lose to. Um, he played, 
let's see, thought seizes, downfalls, dissolves, uh, vault, silence the believers, and that sort of thing. Uh, and I've got the score sheet here where I uh, first game just drew uh, very poorly. And the second game I drew even worse. Uh, I'm not kidding. I had a two land hand. You know, uh, I mulliganed on the first. And then I draw six and I've got two lands. Perfect, right? You know, that's exactly what you want in a six land hand, or a six uh, card hand. And I hit my 10th land drop in a row up against this. And so, you know, there's some decks that you can't seem to lose to, or some decks that, you know, can't really seem to beat you, but you can always lose. You can always just get terrible draws and lose to yourself. And so I was playing up against Luke, and I just lost two games in a row. And so I was, you know, just sitting there, like, watching my dreams fade away. I even felt like every draw off the top, like at a certain point, I just knew, like, it's another mountain, isn't it? You know, drawing it, that's another mountain. You know, plunking it on the table, holding my, you know, other two or three mountains in hand, trying to pretend like I've got some sort of game. But I hit it, and so that's when I was two and two. And so that was my dream of saying, like, okay, I don't think that any, any four and twos are going to make it in the top eight, so this is probably done for. Uh, so that one was done. Uh, had a good game uh, with Luke, and then I moved on to round five up against uh, Ivan, and, uh, Ivan? Yeah, I think so. Uh, Ivan was really cool. Uh, he was a, a guy that was originally from South Africa. There's somebody in my congregation that's from South Africa, and so we started up a little conversation. Just a really nice guy. He had on a Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy t-shirt, so I liked him immediately. Um, and he got pared down, which is very unfortunate for him, because, you know, it's still a pretty big tournament. Like, even though I couldn't make the top eight at that point, the top 16 get a special playmat and a whole box of cards, which is like a $100 value. And so it's it's not like, you know, Friday Night Magic, okay, well, I got knocked out of this. I don't get my little, you know, promo card. It's still 100 bucks. And so he's playing for top eight, and I'm playing for 100 bucks. And so I can't just scoop to the guy, even though I like him a lot. And so we uh, kind of dance around all that stuff, and then, you know, we start to play. And he's playing uh, blue, white, black dragons which it's not my best matchup, it's my second best matchup, because blue-black you know, just has a terrible time beating me. Um, and at this point, when he sits down across from me, there's some recognition, which has now happened twice. Um, it's so funny being in the shop. You know, there are 48 other guys, and uh, the other side of the shop, they were running another pre-TQ, so this is starting to get crazy at this point, you know. Uh, I'm an introvert. I like to have a nice little place where I can retreat and talk to other people, but the shop is just nuts. You know, there are people at every single table. People are fighting for space. The refs are, you're not the refs, the uh, the judges are yelling like, this is round two for the pre-TQ of Modern and round three for the, the RPTQ and so-and-so hits it here and so-and-so do this and don't go to the washroom and, you know, all these things. And so it's crazy, but the last several people that I've sat down against have looked at me and they're like, oh, you're the pastor playing the Impact Tremors deck. It's like, how did you find that out? I've been in the country a couple of hours. And I was trying to protect all my super secret tech, but it was, uh, I, you know, it was fun. Like, people saw my deck, you know, I got big crowds going, um, talking about how good it was, and I sit down against these control guys, and they're just saying, oh, no, I've got to play this guy, this is my worst match. Um, so I sit down against him, and, you know, his his first draw was pretty reasonable. Uh, the second game, his draw was fantastic, and he O2s me, you know, and I just, you know, just get nailed again. And so I'm two and three at this point. And so, you know, I'm, I'm glad for him. I'm glad that he won. Uh, he was talking about going on a trip um, out for, you know, if he if he manages to qualify, which he hope he did. Uh, he's got some family out there he wanted to go see. So I was happy for him. Um, but I have now lost my third one. And so I started two and oh, and I just felt like I was on top of the world. You know, just get two more in and I'm going to draw my way in and then hit, you know, this huge skid lose to the two decks that I'm the best against, lose to some deck that I hadn't even prepared against that's very good and very good against my deck. And so, you know, I go into the last round, and I was thinking, like, you know, okay. So I'm not going to go to the Pro Tour. I'm probably not going to win a whole box. But if I win this last round, I'll at least win half a box. Because it's a pretty generous prize structure at these things. Um, the top 24 get half a box. The top 16 get a box. Uh, the the losers in the top eight, so the top five through eight, get a box and a half and an invite back to the next RPTQ. And then the top four get airfare and the invite. Um, but, you know, you if you're in a, a store like I was where you've got 48 guys, half of you get half a box. And so it's a pretty big deal. Um, so, you know, I played that last game and I sat down 
and it was the, I believe, fourth time that I faced one of the decks that I'm really good against, Blue Black. Uh, and the guy's name was Ian, and he was really nice. He had a uh, t-shirt with a great big boo on it uh, from the original Nintendo. And uh, he saw me, and again, you know, the eye roll of, oh no, I'm going to play the red deck. Uh, red decks weren't doing uh, particularly well there. Mine was probably the uh, the one that performed the best. Um, and considering how I did, that's, you know, saying a lot. Um, but I sat down, and my hands were just perfect. Like, the exact combination. You know, here's my score sheet. I don't know if you can see how little ink is on the score sheet. Um, the second game, literally... His life total is 16, 7, dead. That's how good my hands were. Um, and so, like, my hands were just everything they're supposed to be. Um, he he didn't stumble on mana, but he didn't have the double black that he needed. And so it was just, like, obliterating. But, you know, it was, it was the last match of the day, so it's, you know, why couldn't this have happened earlier? Uh, but I did finish 3-3, three and three, and my tiebreakers were good enough, since two of the guys that I faced ended up in the top eight actually facing each other. Um, it was the uh, South African guy... Uh, Ivan ended up facing Kai, and I don't know who won because I had to get home, um, but I know that one of them won, so I got knocked out by somebody who was now playing on the Pro Tour, which is pretty cool. Um, I'd like my claim of fame to be that I got to play in the Pro Tour, but I guess the next best thing is getting knocked out by somebody who's in the Pro Tour, right? Um, so anyway, um, I won that last round, you know, stuck around, and uh, with my tiebreakers, I managed to win a little bit of product. Now, if anybody is interested, this is foreign product. These are Canadian cards. So if anybody wants some interesting foreign product, it's just like the regular cards in English, but it has A after all of the names on the cards. So let me know if you're interested in that. Uh, so I, uh, I headed back, got on the subway, knew which way I was going this time, uh, got in the car, and uh, drove all the way back. Um, they let me back in the country. I was trying to explain again to the woman coming in that, yes, I'm a pastor that plays Magic the Gathering, no, it is not witchcraft. It's a very complicated math game. I'm a giant nerd. Please let me go home. And she let me go home. And so I took the long trip back. I made several stops. And I'm getting too old to travel like that. Um, I'm only 31, but I felt like I was like 90. Um, doing this you know, 24-hour back and forth. Uh, not much sleep. I didn't even feel like it was that much caffeine. Like That used to be just the caffeine that I would have in a normal day. You know, a big cup of coffee, uh, one energy drink You know, over the course of an entire day. Man, I was just beat, you know. I uh, I started singing 99 bottles of beer on the wall at one point to keep myself awake, and, you know, finally got back in and uh, crashed and woke up. And uh, so that was my tournament. Um, I've got some mixed feelings about it. Uh, I put in a lot of work on this deck. I've never put in so much tuning on a deck in my life. Uh, I prepared for the top 12 decks. I ran into a lot of rogues, so it just kind of seemed like it was for nothing. Um, and I got some really bad draws at some really crucial times. And so part of me just wanted to look at it and say, like, man, this was just a giant waste. You know, you put in all this effort, you drive all the way up to Toronto, and, you know, you see these matchups that you win against, like, 90% of the time, unless you draw 10 mountains in a row. And so that part of me was disappointed. Um, I'm thinking, like, why am I even doing this? You know, why am I playing this stupid game? Uh, but uh, I did get to go up to Toronto. I got to see an old family friend. I got to meet a whole bunch of interesting people. And trying to look at it from the more positive side... You know, if I had to do this whole tournament over again, even knowing the exact matchups I would face, I would bring the exact same deck. I feel like my deck was right. Uh, I didn't end up using some of my sideboard cards, and so, you know, kind of up on up in the air on those. But, uh, you know, I really did like my deck, and I think if I got another shot at it, I don't think I would be like an odds-on favorite to go to the Pro Tour. But if you look at the two games that I lost that I really should have won... I should have actually gotten to the top eight and had a shot at it. And so I feel like I'd be like a coin flip chance, which is pretty good considering that it's a tournament of 48 guys who all want a pre-TQ. So nobody there is bad, right? Uh, so that part of me says like, okay, maybe one day I'm going to take another shot at this and maybe I get to do it. And if I do, that's awesome. I've always wanted to go to the Pro Tour, even if I go and lose every single game, just to say I've been at the Pro Tour would be really cool. Um, but, you know, just thinking about it, it's not the kind of thing that I'm going to chase. I'm not going to be a grinder. I'm not going to go every single you know Saturday. I had to go find the closest pre-TQ so I can get one in. I'm going to do one a season. And, you know, if I happen to win it, I'm going to go to the uh, the regional. And I'm going to enjoy it. And if I don't win, I don't win. And if I do, that's awesome. Um, but in general, I had a good time. And so uh, over the uh, next couple of months, I'm going to be doing a lot less playtesting. 
Uh, I'm not sure what I'm going to do with the site uh, because before I had this you know really great deck that I was playing pretty hard, uh, but I'll figure out something to do with the videos. But I had a good time. Uh, if you have any uh, questions or comments, uh, please leave them in the, the comment section below. Uh, thank you for everybody that helped me to test this deck, and a lot of people really did. Uh, particularly one BKSJ. I will use his uh, his name in such a way. And everybody else that helped me out. So that was my tournament report for the first ever regional Pro Tour uh, qualifier in Toronto. And I will see you guys uh, either in person at In The Zone or I'll see you on the internet again. So thanks a lot.